just shared my screen so that as we go through the tutorial, I can demonstrate things to you in case people are having any um, problems with running OpenCore. Um, so what I'll do is work through the um, parts of the tutorial that hopefully people have downloaded. Um, I've, I've got it up on my screen at the moment. And I'm not going to be able to get through all of this, but I'll get through hopefully enough that you can begin to use OpenCore and access the Physio model repository. Um, and then the tutorial is reasonably self-explanatory for, for a variety of other more complex models. But So we'll start off with some very simple models just to get used to the features of OpenCore. Um, so on page two of the tutorial, there's a little bit of background to the VPH Physiome project that I thought I'd quickly go through just to give you the context for the um, what I'm going to talk about. So well over 10 years ago, probably 15 years ago now, the, the International Union of Physiological Sciences, IUPS, um, decided that it needed to pay more attention to computational physiology in terms of handling complex physiological problems and also being able to connect to molecular biology. So we began a project called the Physiome Project, which was intended to develop standards around the use of models, computational models, in being able to bridge molecular biology through to tissues and, and up to whole body scale physiological systems, organs and organ systems. And then, so that began in 1997. And then in um, around 2006, the European Commission um, under Framework 6 commissioned a study led by Marco Visconti that produced a report called the STEP proposal, a strategy for a European physiome step. And that led to the funding under Framework 7 of a, of a whole range of projects based around computation for the health sciences. And the, the focus with the VPH was always both trying to link to clinical applications, but also um, to support and use the work that had been done under the Physiome project, and also to encourage um, industry links for the um, various uses of models. So that Together now we call the VPH Physiome Project and um, a few years ago at the end of the first phase of the 2007 um, Network of Excellence, we instituted the VPH Institute, we, we formed the VPH Institute to carry on the momentum associated with um, talking to Brussels and providing European but now global leadership in terms of um, physio and VPH um, uh, initiatives. And this also now involves the US through the IMAG. NIH began um, a interagency activity called IMAG led by Grace Ping, which meets annually and they, in fact, they're meeting in Washington around now, and they also are contributing to the uh, overall goals of the VPH physio and project. So that's, that's the background. And one of the, the very early initiatives that we began that was fundamental to the Physio project was the idea of developing standards that were for multi scale modeling because it's used having people developing models if others can't use them and reproduce what they've done. So the development of initially Salomel and then field ML as a spatial standard. Cell ML is designed to handle um, ordinary differential equations and algebraic equations. Field ML is designed to handle spatial finite element type modeling. And there's also an initiative called SBML started by the systems biology, molecular systems biology community. So at the level of, of lumped parameter models based on ordinary differential and algebraic equations, the two standards in common use now are CELML and SBML, and those two communities work closely together um, because they're very complementary. SBML is targeted mostly at biochemical reactions, CELML is targeted more at a broader range of biophysics and the link to 
particularly relate to multi-scale physics at the organ level. Um, so if we go to the next page, one of the projects that we began a number of years ago was developing a software environment for creating, simulating, visualizing cell ML models. Cell ML being the encoding standard. Um, you want to be people to be able to fairly easily create new models and run them and then be able to um, archive them into a repository that when models are published they can be made available to the public. So we began the development of software and also a model repository called the Physio Model Repository and that has all the, the current Salomel models, the 600 or so Salomel models that have been coded up from the literature are on that repository and I'll talk in a minute about how to access that repository. But in, just to get people going, I've suggested to everyone that they download OpenCore. This is a software program written by Alan Garney, who lives in the south of France, and it's the primary tool that we use for solving cell ML models. So if you have downloaded OpenCore, what you should see is a blank or at least a, a page, page with an icon displayed like this and this should have, you should see two environments. One is a simulation environment and one is an editing environment. Um, so we'll move between those two environments in a minute. And then also if you if you use the toggle, which on a PC is control and spacebar, or on a Mac is command and spacebar, you can toggle between being in an environment where you've set up your model and you want to run it, and an environment where you're accessing the databases of models, either from the, the, the Physio model repository or um, from the um, models that you've created yourself or you have on your local desktop. So if, um, if I just go back to the page here, I'm not going to do this, but you can move, you can move the um, windows around to choose whether you want to have them like on the left of that diagram or on the right, um, but for most screen shapes it makes sense to have it. Um, as shown on, on figure 1A, but you can dock these windows um, as, you, as you wish. The, the software is written in, with a plug-in architecture, it's C++ software with a plug-in architecture um, to keep it modular um, and it uses Qt as the visualization environment, the GUI environment. So you can choose which particular modules you want to incorporate into your current version, but by default it makes to just leave them all on as, as, as they are when you download the software. So if we then go to the next section, page four, um, and we'll set up a, um, a, a very simple model, which is a second order model, um, represented as two first order models shown here um, and, and I'll show you how to set those up in open core and then to, to run the model. But before I do that, maybe we should just double check there aren't any questions. Jerome is going to monitor the any questions that come in and, and then if we need to pause and deal with some of those questions, he'll let me know. So Jerome, any questions in so far? So, okay, so apparently there are none in questions, no type questions, no hands. Uh, okay, so that's good. Maybe All right, we'll carry on. Yeah. So, if you now go to, if you keep this page open on your computer with this part inside box, is the part we're going to implement into Open Core um, to run the first model, and and you'll see that this is um, has it's a van der Poel oscillator, the model, so the model, it's arbitrary what we call it, but I've called it van der Poel model, 
um, and it has a component, COMP there stands for component, and the component that we're dealing with is the main component, so every model has to have a main component. And then we declare certain variables, time, and because Salomel uses dimensions, all variables will have dimensions, whether they're dimensionless or not. So in this case, this is a, we're treating this as a dimensionless problem, so we have to say that it's dimensionless, and we give it an initial condition that time is initially zero. And we've got two other variables, x and y, so that second order equation was turned into two first order equations, declaring y to be dx dt. Um, and we give x an initial value of minus 2, y the velocity an initial value of 0, and there's one constant, mu, which will just give the value 1, the initial value 1. Then those are the two um, differential equations. So in open core, they are represented by typing in ODE bracket x comma t close bracket equals y one, and as shown for the second one. So let's do that so that everyone is up to that point. And the way you do it is if you go to your Open Core page um, and go to edit the editing environment, you should have click, click on Salomel text if that's not highlighted. So this is the environment into which we're going to type these simple expressions to express the mathematics that we're dealing with. Then if you go to File, under New, open the file, Salomel 1.1 file. The distinction between Salomel 1.0 and 1.1 is that 1.0, all models are flat, whereas in 1.1 we can create sub-modules and import them, which is a better way, better way of handling a hierarchy of models for a complex model. But you can always, having created a hierarchy of models by importing, you can always flatten it and generate a, a 1.0 model. So what you should do now is simply type that code, and you can copy and paste if you want from here directly into the um, into the text Salomel text view. I've actually got a a version of that here, so I'll bring that up. So that's what it should look like you should see um, a code in the Salomel text view under the editing menu item that shows some sort of model name, van der Poel, the main component, the definition of the variable e, x, y, and the parameter mu, and then the two differential equations. And you know that you've got those equations typed correctly, when when you click on that, you can it appears above the text. And so that second model appears, second equation appears there, dy dt equals mu times 1 minus x squared times y minus x. And note that every line here has a semicolon ending it. So and if you do, if you save that, if you do Control S and save that, if it is able to be saved, it will. If it if there's a mistake in the code, um, it will give you a warning. So, for example, if I was missing that semicolon and I try saving, I get a message saying that it can't save it. So maybe I'll pause there for just a couple of minutes to let everyone get point, typing those, or copying and pasting those equations in. One thing to be aware of is that in this documentation here, anything and inside open core, anything that's preceded by a double slash is a comment. So when you, if you're copying and pasting from the PDF across to here, just take out that line involving the comment. I mean, you can have it in there, but but it, it perhaps is a little bit confusing. Okay, so at this point, um, I'll carry on unless anyone raises a hand. But 
um, you should have those equations typed there, save that to your local, to some local directory. Once you've done that, go click on the simulation view and now we've got, um, you may have one window or more, um, you can vary the number of panels for displaying graphical output by using the plus and minus buttons. So for this model I suggest you create three graphical output panels. Then the first thing we're going to do is to change the default time range. Instead of being 0 to 1000, we'll make that 0 to 100. And instead of making the point interval 1, we'll make that 0 0.1 for this particular model. The, the integrator being used here, if you solvers, you'll be able to see that the integrator by default being used is CVODE, which is a, um, a Lawrence Livermore very efficient um, ODE solver, open source solver that's incorporated into the open core um, platform. And it will automatically choose steps to achieve whatever um, error tolerance is specified here, you, you've specified. But those normally have sensible default values, so you can just leave them as is. So the point interval is mainly for plotting purposes here, um, just so that we get a nice smooth graph. So then the next thing to do is to click on, a, you notice that when you click on these panels, a blue bar appears next to the panel. So when that blue bar appears, that's the one we're dealing with. And we now want to allocate a variable to that panel. So if you go to the list of parameters listed here, you'll see X, and if you right click, it gives you an option to plot against the variable of integration, which is time. If we go to the next one, again right click and this time on Y, plot against variable of integration Y, and on the last one we'll plot Y against X, so this is now state space display. So then instead of choosing plot against variable of integration, choose plot against and then from the list of main component variables you can choose X. The, the symbols shown here um, have a meaning, so something that's red with a hole in it, the hole means you can edit that variable or parameter, the red means it's a parameter, the blue ones are the other variables and you can see that you can edit the initial value of X because it's got a hole in the middle. One that's a full here, a derivative, you can't edit the initial value of that because that variable is a Y. Okay, so you should now have, and if you list under graphs, um, you can see, sorry, I'm going to remove one because I had that there for a previous model. You should be able to see, first of all, um, that you're plotting x versus time and then y versus time on the next one and y versus x on the bottom one. So then if you just click the little arrowhead button, run simulation, the simulation runs, it's very fast, CVODE is a very efficient time integrator so you you may want to, in order to see it, you may want to slow it down. So the little wheel shown up here allows you to slow down the simulation so you can stop it during the progress of the simulation. So let's do that. If I, I'll get rid of the graphs, so the rubbish bin symbol allows you to delete the graphs. The circle, green semicircle arrow is resetting the model parameters. So if we run that again, I'll slow it down a bit further, you can pause at any point. So the same icon that allowed you to start the simulation, if you click on that one again, it'll pause. If you click it again, it'll carry on. But you can go and change parameters if you want. So the parameter list 
down here reflects the current values of the parameters that are being solved. So you can see we're up to time 57.8, the value of x is 1.33. So I could go and change mu at that point if I wanted. I could go and edit mu and then carry on with the simulation. So what this is showing is the value of x versus t, the top, so it's an oscillator, and the value of y, which is the derivative of x, um, on the next panel, and then it's showing a state space diagram at the bottom. So I'll do that once more. And you can slow it down. It's a log scale um, for slowing it down at the top. And if you want to stop the simulation, the second icon is the stop one. So when you then hit run simulation, it starts from the beginning again. Whereas if you're pausing, you just click the same one to pause. Once, once you've run that simulation, um, if you want to export the results, if you click on this little icon here, which is um, CSV, uh, uses the standard format, CSV is the output format. So if you click on that, it'll allow you, it'll bring up a, um, a uh, dialog which allows you to then save that as a, a CSV file, Vanderpol data. And then you can use a spreadsheet to um, have a look at the individual solution. So that will contain the complete solution for all variables. Um, okay, so I'll pause there to see if there's any questions from people before we go on to the next example. So apparently there are no questions. I might have one. So I'm, I'm using a version for Mac OS X and um, I have some difficulties to set up the scales of my graphs so I cannot see the results. So I don't know if anyone in the SMD has the same problem. Otherwise, I can just move on. Maybe. Um, by the way, the, the, you can move graphs around with this I'm doing now with the mouse. You can also um, zoom in or zoom out, um, and you can reset to where you were. Um, and if you hold the, um, the shift key down, you can actually find the, the location of a particular point. Um, I've, all of this is covered in the tutorial, so I won't, I won't go over all the, the features for um, manipulating in the graphs when you solve for them. Okay, so I'll okay. go to the... Okay, Jerome, shall I go on? Yeah, yeah, please, please go on. Um, so let's go to the next example. Um, one thing, I'll, I'm just going back now to the PDF document. Um, I've listed in the document the various functions that you can use to represent various mathematical um, operators. Um, we use square, x squared with SQR here, um, but there's a list, a whole list of other ones there. Um, Maybe one other thing I'll just mention um, that's shown in Fig 3. If we go back to the editing environment in the code, that this is the, the Salomel text view which allows us to quickly enter those equations um, and, and check that they look, that they're correct. But the raw, if you click on the button, that shows you the encoding, the actual Salomel encoding of that model in XML. So Salomel is an XML extensible markup language standard as an exchange standard and it uses MathML for the mathematics and it separately deals with metadata through um, RDF which we'll 
come to later or it's in the tutorial. Um, but it, you don't normally need to read the XML file, but there it is in case you want to, to look at it. And then the one which is just un uninterpreted by the, the XML. Um, and then there's another button which we'll come to later in the tutorial, which is to do with annotating um, the terms. Because generally, it's good practice to, to try and create modular models that are, are well-defined modules that you can then import into building more complex models. And part of the importing process is facilitated if the components of a model are annotated against biological ontologies and biophysical ontologies. That, that's covered in the tutorial and we won't get to it today, but just to let you know that's where the, the button is that allows you to, to create annotations of a model. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the simulation environment, delete that model so we start from scratch again, and then we'll go on to, um, I think we've covered all the, the panel um, buttons, I've been using those, so I think, I think that's covered already. Um, and I've covered the, the fact that the parameters are indicated, various types of parameter or variable are indicated by the colours of those little icons. Um, so let's go to the next one, which is on page 8, section 4. And this is opening a SALML file from a, a local directory or a physio model repository. So if we go back to the open core environment, use your control space bar to access the left hand side. By the way, there's also help facilities shown on the right hand side. Um, so down the bottom, you can, there's a file organizer. So I'll get rid of models in there so at the moment. So your one will initially be blank, but when you've created a, mo a model, such as your van der Poel model, you can drag and drop that one down to your file organizer, or you can drag one from the, from the model repository. So what I want to show you now is really how to use the, the Physio model repository to access models. Um, so if you, from, from the start, you should see a list of, it's saying 566 exposures were found. So that's directly, if you're on the web, that will be directly accessing the physio model repository. Um, the first button here is a button for cloning a workspace, and I'm not going to do that now, that's more, that, that's basically if you find a model that's very similar to the one you want to create, you can clone it and use that as your starting point for your own model. But what I want to do now is just use this next button, which is a right hand, um, the, the right hand of those two icons. If you click on that, what it does is it finds, and I'm just using the very first one on the list, um, it will find if there's a Salomel model corresponding to that example. And then when you click on that Salomel model, it will then load it into OpenCore. Um, having loaded it in, you can use your control space bar to give more real estate for that model. And then you can see all the, all the parameters of that model from the Physio model repository shown here. I'm not going to run this model because it would take a little while to set it up to to talk about how to interpret it. But I just want people to be aware that they can access the full, all of the 600 or so models in the PMR, Physio Model Repository, can be accessed through OpenCore um, by just clicking on the model. So I'll get rid of that and go back. And it's if you want to if you want to just go to the website um, the if you go to Google type in cell ML 
you'll see the Salomel project that shows you the website for the Salomel project. And if you go to models, there's, there's other tutorial help by the way on that website, but if you go to the model repository, this lists all the, the models um, on the repository covering a very wide range of types of biology. So for example, if you go to electrophysiology, um, there's well over 100 models there of, of various electrophysiological models um, that people have developed. And generally these models will have a, a diagram with them showing the components of the model. What we're working on, but it's not an open core yet, is the ability to create these diagrams automatically from the Salomel. Um, so most of the ones that are on the website have been done by hand, but um, what we want to do obviously is to is uh, automatic from the Salomel. But I think that the, the most interesting thing for people to be aware of is that if you look at the views available to a model, you can click on one that says mathematics, and that will then take you and render, take you to a page where it renders all the mathematics for that particular model. And this is quite a complex um, cardiac electrophysiological model. You can also um, go to code, so if you click on generated code, you can then go to various um, types of code that will again are automatically generated from the CELML. So this is showing you the Python code for that particular model. Um, there's also MATLAB, uh, Fortran, C and C++. So those, those are the views that are available for this particular model um, and There's, there's quite a lot of other functionality for the website that tutorial covers part of. It's not, it doesn't by any means cover all of the functionality, but we will um, increasingly add all of the functionality to the tutorial to let people know how to use the facilities on the website. The, in particular, the fact that there's workspaces so you can collaboratively develop models under password protection until a model, for example, is published and then you might want to make it available as an exposure, public exposure. So there's a lot of facilities on the website for collaboration. Um, David Nickerson, who's um, very much driving the, the Salomel Physium project efforts in Auckland, um, is the person who, if people have questions about the, um, the actual features of some of these facilities on the workspaces on the on the site. He's the person to contact. Tommy Yu is the webmaster for the the Physio Model Repository. And any questions yourself, um, go to webmaster, you'll see Tommy Tommy Yu. Okay, so I think that's all I want to say about the um, about the Cell Mail Repository. Um, and the fact that you can access it directly from within OpenCore. Um, so if we go back to the tutorial, again I'm just keeping an eye out in case anyone has any questions, but if not we'll push on. Um, so what I've talked about here in terms of clicking on these buttons is, is highlighted, is, is discussed in the tutorial. Um, I'm not going to talk about the first order ODE model I think you, that was mainly because I wanted to make sure that this tutorial um, was accessible for people who didn't have any background in modeling or mathematics really or only high school level school level background. So there's just a discussion about first order equations and exponential decay so on there. Um, and there's a picture of a New Zealand hundred dollar note which has a picture of a um, decay curve from a first order equation because um, the 
Nobel laureate Ernest Rutherford is a, is a New Zealander who, he was the guy that split the atom, but he was also the person that first discovered the radioactive decay time constant. And so the, the bank note shows that sort of picture of that decaying, um, radioactive decay process. So the next model I want to move to is this one, the Lorenz. Um, so this is now a third order system, three first order equations um, shown here, and it's, it just has more interesting behaviour, so it's worth having a little bit of a play with this model. So what you should do now is go back to OpenCore and copy and paste the text from here or type it in. Um, so if I do that by, by I've already got it, I'll just drag it over um, and if you look under editing text view, that's what you should see. So now we've got a, a model called Lorenz. The main component has T, X, Y and Z variables. They're all dimensionless still and they've got initial values of 0, 1, 1 and 1. And then there's three parameters, O and beta, which have initial values 10, 28 and 2, 2 and 2 thirds. Then there's three equations. The first one, dx dt is sigma times y minus x. The second one, dy dt, shown there, and the third one. So I'll just pause to let people get those equations into open core. Oh, we do have one question here. Yes, we do have a question. Um, so maybe I can just, this is Joel Castro, maybe I can just unmute his, uh, his microphone. Joel, please formulate your question. Mm. Okay, so I will formulate it because I don't know if you cannot speak. So at the left side of my screen, I just see cell model repository and not physio model repository, and I can't import directly the model in the same version, or I can change that. Sorry, I don't know the answer for that. Maybe, um, maybe um, David Nickerson and Andreas is on the line. Okay. There we go. There's an answer from from David. I'm just. I'm just. I'm getting. That's okay. That's that's okay. It's it's soft. Someone from the David Nickerson. Uh, so gave it to me. Okay. So Joel okay, just so Joel's just responded. That's fine. That's fine. All right, so if we go back to the um, example um, with those three, the, remember the test is that when you click on an equation, you see the mathematics in that equation. If there's anything wrong, if I, if I take away something, you'll get a, an exclamation mark. And Again, when you save it to your directory, you can only save it if it's if you've got the um, syntax correct. There's no particular significance to the indenting, but it just helps to have it indented to show the structure of the model. And remember, you can add double slash with a comment. if you want Then if you go to um, back to simulation, uh, 
I'm going to, you can, the, in order to compare between models, some of the variables that you set up for displaying will still be there. I'm, to make things less confusing, I'm just going to remove, remove those. You can untick them as well, but I'm just removing them. So we're starting from scratch, effectively. So with this model, if what we're aiming to do is to produce three graphs, one which has x versus time, one which has y versus x, state space description, and one that has z versus x, another um, part of the state space. So as you can see from the figure 10, the, value, the start and end points that are convenient for this model are to run it for 50 time units and to set the increment as 0.001. So we'll change that to 50 and point interval to 0 0.001. Then for the first one gra graph, we go down to X, right click, plot against variable of integration. For the second one, right click on Y and plot against X. And for the third one, go to Z, right click against main, plot against X, I think it was, yep. So we should have X as a function of time, the variable of integration, Y versus X and Z versus X. And you can check that when you, if you have your graph panel open, so the top one is x versus t, next one's y versus x, and the next one's z versus x. Okay, so this time what I suggest you do is roll a little wheel well to slow it down very substantially so that you can watch the solution evolve. And then click go. And now you can see that the graphs are rescaling to accommodate the current solution. That'll settle down in a minute. Perhaps go a little bit faster. Um, and you can see that this is a, a chaotic system. So it's going to spur around more than one um, focal point. So perhaps I'll speed it up a bit more. So it's going around this critical point here. Um, and it flips back to and then occasionally zips back again. Um, and then if you, I'll just run that again. Reset the parameters. That's quite a, it's just an interesting behavior, typical of a system that's very sensitive to initial conditions and to parameters. So if you change some of the parameters here, you can get quite different behavior. By the way, one extra panel in open core down the bottom it shows you gives you information about the, um, the simulation time most of that time will be plotting the fact that it's continuously plotting to the screen um, as it runs so but that was with that slow down if we if we roll the wheel right over and run it then that was taking 14 milliseconds to run. We've got some more questions here, Jerome. Should we deal with those? Oh no, sorry, those are the ones from before. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the tutorial. Um, and what I think I'll do now, we've only got 10 minutes left, and what I'm going to do is just innate um, some of the other 
what what this tutorial is covering and where where we're t intending to go with Open Core and also what we're currently adding to the tutorial as well, because we'll we'll make it available as we as we improve it or as we add. So the next sections in the tutorial deal with um, units. So SalML has uses physical units. Um, most bioengineers and physiologists like to think about the so the quantities they're dealing with. Um, mathematicians tend to like to deal with dimensionless equations, but it's often convenient when you're thinking about the physics of a problem to be thinking about the magnitude of the terms and the and the units, the values of the of or the or the, uh, <coughs> the units that you're using. Salomel will automatically check that your units are consistent. So you know that when you're running a model, it's it's been checked for consistency of units. Um, so the the context that the tutorial is using to explain units is the is electrophysiology going through initially the background to the Nernst equation and the development of equilibrium potentials in giant squid axons and then in cardiac cells and give, giving a little bit of explanation from the second law of thermodynamics about the derivation of the Nernst equation. Um, and then it talks about the gating behavior of channels, so the idea that you're moving between the equilibrium potential for potassium in the rested state and then moving towards the equilibrium potassium potential for sodium when the cell is activated, but through a gated process that has time dynamics. And so the what the next few sections do is to illustrate this for the potassium channel from the squid axon that Hodgkin and Huxley used, then the sodium channel, and then puts it together into the Hodgkin Huxley um, equations. And then it's dealing with units and SI units, there's only seven of them, length, time, amount of substance, temperature, mass, current, and luminous, luminous intensity. All other units are derived from those seven. So Salomel incorporates those units intrinsically and then incorporates a whole range of other standard units that build on those, such as Newton, Joule, Pascal, Watt, etc. And then it uses a standard terminology for indicating um, a multiple or fraction of a unit, and there's a list there shown for those. Um, and then this example, of this box shows you how to set up units based on those those starting points. So, for example, when you define a unit of milliseconds, so I'll make my screen a bit bigger for that. When you define milliseconds, you what you're doing is defining a unit unit of sins or the prefix of milli, then when you define a unit which is per millisecond, i.e. millisecond to the minus one, then you define seconds with a prefix of milli and an exponent of minus one, and so on. So that, that sets up all the, the units for um, these ion channel models. And then um, the tutorial covers the development of the potassium channel models, um, and I'll just scroll through this and then runs it as a single, single isolated module for the potassium channel, um, and then for the sodium channel, and then for um, the nerve action potential that imports those channels to create a Composite uh, model. Yes. Uh, just, just before we go through the nerve action uh, model, so we had uh, so uh, a hand raised by uh, Muhammad Wazir Khalid. So maybe I will unmute him. Okay. Yeah, Muhammad, please, if you can talk. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, it is. I don't know where to write it, but. Uh, I was wondering where can I get this uh, tutorial? Is it uploaded on the website or where is it? Um, it's 
It's, it, can you answer that one, Jerome? It's, it's, on the, it's on the VPH website, it's on the Salomel website. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so you should have the link uh, within the email that, uh, that you've received from, uh, from Martin Accounting, from uh, the VPH manager. Uh, otherwise, okay. just type a question and then I can answer and I copy the link to you. Okay, and I have another question as well. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to model uh, calcium mine concentration as in astrocytes, brain cells. Uh, do you think it, is it possible? Uh, currently, I'm using console multiphysics. Uh, do you think is it possible to model that in this uh, software as well? I, I didn't quite catch all the question. You're modeling an astrocyte. Uh, yes, calcium ion concentration in astrocytes. So, uh, do you think is it possible to use uh, model that kind of stuff in this software? Yes, yes, it is. If it's if it's a system of ordinary, as an algebra. Uh, I'm using partial differential equations. Yes, no, no, you can't. If if it's partial differential equations, that means it's got a spatial context, then um, it needs to use what we call field ML standards. So no, it won't. The cell ML is only for the ODE algebra. Okay, okay so, so this is limited to ODE only. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, we, will, we will try and we will be extending this tutorial to cover other field ML standard and the use of other software for partial differential equations, but at the moment we're just focusing on the ODEs. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Um, and I just want to put in a, a slight warning here for people that are trying the tutorial with the Hodgkin-Huxley equations. There's actually a mistake in the, um, I think um, I need to double check some of the, the code that's listed um, for the Hodgkin-Huxley because we tried it we double checked it earlier today and, and we found a bug, so just be aware of that. Sorry about that. Um, the next one is a, is a cardiac action potential model. This one does work, by the way, directly from the tutorial. Um, and the main difference here is the, the fact that cardiac channels have a lot more control over the potassium to provide a plateau um, during which the heart contracts. Um, but there's an example, and, and what we're particularly trying to emphasize in this example is the fact that Salomel allows you to put all the units into a separate um, file and then import that file and also put all your parameters into a file which you can import so that you can have multiple files corresponding to different parameter sets um, that you might be needing for a particular model. But it also makes the fact it's very important to develop these models with a modular structure. So this is illustrating the fact that this Novel 62 cardiac model is built on three, it first of all defines three sub-modules for the sodium channel, the potassium channel and the leakage channel and then imports those, um, encapsulates them as the example shows and in order to then solve the equations at the membrane level. Um, so that, that example is particularly important in terms of showing how to build, how to, to make best use of the modular structure, the import structure of Salomel. Um, and then the next part of the tutorial talks about annotation and um, this is where you want to annotate the components of your model against ontologies. We, we will provide the, this at the moment the capacity within up and core allow annotate against the bi biological ontologies, but it, we, we don't yet have the ontology for the biophysics which is needed to complete this section. So that'll be a future development. Um, and then so there's an explanation of why ontologies are important and how it all works. There. Then there's more information about the Physio model repository, um, listing of all the models, um, an example of a particular model, more complex model. Um, and, and also here there's an indication of where we're heading with this, which is to 
also take some of these models apart and allow you to link individual components such as particular protein associated with a transporter, in this case a, um, a sodium chloride co-transporter, where we can then link to bioinformatic databases, particularly Uniprot um, and FMA databases for information about a particular protein. Um, and expect to see more and more of this on the CellMail site where we are creating libraries of, of proteins as ion channels or transporters or enzymes that can be accessed as standalone modules for importing into other more complex models. There's a speed comparison there against MATLAB um, and then there's a section on the use of a um, markup language for specifying the actual simulation. So the latest version, not the stable one that you're using, but the very latest version of OpenCore is building an access to CDML, which is a simulation um, definition language, and the idea of providing functional curation or comparing models um, with each other and against experimental data. So there's, there's an initiative from Oxford that is um, developing a capacity for that under a website called WebAB. So links to that in the description of that, um, in that in that section. And then a little bit about future developments, um, which is the BioSignal ML, the, the ability to handle signals in a um, standardized way with a, a standard for signals, that has now been implemented beta release of open core, so that will appear fairly soon in the in the new release. Um, and there's various other features that are being worked on by Alan Garney that are, are mentioned there. And we're hoping to have a lot more facilities around parameter estimation and system identification um, available as well. And the, the next the next part of the tutorial that I'll be building will deal with signal transduction pathways. Um, as well as some whole body models of acid-base um, physiology. So I think that's it. I think uh, that's all I wanted to talk about. The main, what I hope you've got out of this is the confidence that you can call or know the basics of how to use it and that you can access the physio model repository um, and anyone that wants to keep up to date on new developments for both open core and um, and the Physio Model Repository should just let Martina know so she can add you to a, a mailing list so we can keep people posted. So unless there's any questions, I think that's probably all from me. Jerome, is there anything else you think we should say? Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Peter. So um, guys, if there is one question, then, then this is uh, the opportunity. So you can use a hand up uh, too. So it seems that there, is, there are no specific questions from the from the attendees. I, I do have one, if I may. Sure. And uh, so I'm not user of open core, uh, open core or cellular models. However, um, we we do use uh, Asian based uh, Asian based uh, um, simulations, and we're using, for example, so softwares like Brevi or NetLogo, and in the, in the Asian-based uh, code, so you can program uh, simple, relatively simple ODs. So in order to uh, in order to establish your rules for a specific agent, and now what I'm seeing from your from your tutorial is that uh, CLNL would be extremely useful uh, when the rule you want to code uh, becomes to be mathematically uh, very complex. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering so whether there is a way to efficiently, iteratively couple agent-based simulations and uh, cell ML models uh, in order to make, so in order to do, yes. to, to exploit the cell ML uh, mathematics. Yes, no, I understand and, and that is something that we've been thinking about because there's no reason that agent-based models shouldn't fit. Um, into the CellML framework. I think the main 
the description of the rules or the or the statements that you make as part of an agent-based model, that's fine. The, the issue is more around the metadata, just how we handle the um, the metadata for agent-based models. But but we're very keen to do that because a lot of people use agent-based models, particularly as a way of moving between ODEs at the subcellular signaling level and agent-based models to represent the integrated behavior of a whole cell, for example, and then often plugged in into PDEs at the, the top end. So we are trying to facilitate that also. But at the moment, um, and, and I think what we'll do is, as we figure out how to deal with the metadata side of agent-based models, we'll create examples on the physio model repository to, to show people how that can be, how CellML can be used for those types of models. Okay, thank you very much for the answer. So if there are no questions from the audience, and it seems there are not, so I think that uh, we can uh, close the webinar. Before we close the webinar, so I would encourage the, the attendees to, 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 to write uh, Martina uh, emails if you have specific suggestions of, uh, of speakers. Uh, you would like to give a webinar for the for the next uh, for the next editions, and uh, so I'm checking whether there are questions. No, so we are closing the webinar. So Peter, thank you very much again for for your time. And, uh, I know you're on a holiday, so <laughs> so particular thanks. Okay, so thank you everyone to attend and uh, and see you as a, at the next webinar, hopefully. Yeah.